The purpose of this video is to briefly review the six critical elements of an SSOP and talk about the formatting and layout of SSOPs such that you'll be able to evaluate that on an example SSOP. And last of all, we'll talk about communication plans for sharing your SSOPs within your facility. First, let's briefly review the six critical elements of an SSOP that were described in the lecture notes. One, the procedures should be described. Two, there should be room for a signature of the person performing the monitoring and a date. Number three, the SSOP should be distinguished in terms of whether it is pre-operational or operational. Number four, the procedures for cleaning or sanitizing should be listed. Number five, the frequency of the procedure should be specified. And number six, the employees responsible for per performing the SSOP should be distinguished. These six critical elements of an SSOP can serve as your own personal rubric for SSOPs that you construct or SSOPs that have already been created that you want to improve. Now I want to draw your attention to this SSOP that I found over the internet. I'll give you some time to look at it and answer the questions of whether this SSOP contains each of the SSOP critical elements that we just talked about. So number one, are the procedures described in detail? Does this SSOP ask for a signature and date? Number three, is this SSOP distinguished as a pre-operational SSOP or an operational SSOP? Number four, are the procedures for cleaning or sanitizing listed? Number five, does this SSOP clarify the frequency at which it should be performed? And number six, does this SSOP clarify which employees are responsible for performing these procedures? Just in case that SSOP that I just showed you was too small on your screen, or I was going through that too fast, I'll post it in the Moodle site, along with one or two other examples of SSOPs. Now that we've talked about the six steps of drafting a good SSOP, I want to take a brief moment to talk about considerations in the formatting and communication of that SSOP. Specifically, I'm talking about how should we draft this SSOP such that it not only looks good and is appealing, but it is also easy to follow. Shown on the screen, I jotted down three thoughts that I had. Uh, one is, is there too little or too much text? Sometimes I see documents and it, they just look overwhelming. Other times I see documents that don't have near enough detail in there. I think we need to establish some sort of happy medium on this scale. Similarly, I think some SSOPs can have too many or too few steps that describe the procedures to be followed. The steps should be specific enough that they can be completed one by one, but sometimes one of the problems that we run into is having too few steps because when we have too few steps, those steps, an individual step, can be confusing and vague. Uh, last consideration I was thinking about was the graphic design. And this is something that I am not trained in, but some companies do have instructional designers that are trained in what font sizes these SSOPs should be drafted with, what font styles they should have in them, and considerations like that. And these things just make these SSOPs easier on the eyes and more attractive to look at. And the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the communication plan. Drafting an SSOP is the first step, but we need to communicate these plans with our operations. Uh, one thing to think about is where should we post these SSOPs? Obviously, they will live on some sort of computer or network within the company, but should these SSOPs be posted in the break room, for example? Or should, be, should there be a designated area that your employees know where to go to to get their hands on these SSOPs? This is an interesting conversation because 
wherever you place these SO, SSOPs, you want to make sure that you're monitoring these particular printouts of the SSOP so that you don't have SSOPs walking around your facility that are dated because from time to time you'll update these SSOPs and at that time you'll want to find the outdated versions and uh, dispose of those. Another idea I had was just like I've made this video you could create instructional videos that describe your SSOPs. Many, many mobile devices make it easy to record videos so you could even demonstrate how to complete the SSOP while you're in your facility. This could be helpful for your workers and operators that will be carrying out these SSOPs. The last message I wanted to communicate was that I could encourage you to think about how do you get employee buy-in on these SSOPs. You might learn a lot from them when it comes to the things that I just mentioned. They might be able to help you determine what font style is best, what font size, whether you've listed too many steps or too few steps, um, things like that. I think it's a good process to get your operators and employees and colleagues to provide their buy-in as you construct your SSOP. In summary, this video walked through the six critical elements of an SSOP. We then looked at an example SSOP that will be posted in the Moodle site for you to evaluate. We discussed the evaluation of the formatting and layout of SSOPs, and we also talked about communication plans for SSOPs.